Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name friends call on the name of Jesus this morning. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all the glory and all the honor. Lord, we magnify your holy name. We ascribe greatness, power, glory to you, our King and our Master. You, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of this world. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord, Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. We come before your throne of grace this morning, trusting not in our own goodness, but in your mercy, O oh God. Not trusting in our power, but in your power, Lamb of God. Will you take away the sin that easily entangle us even this morning? Father, will you cleanse us of all unrighteousness? and king of glory cause us to be at that place. We've come to meet with you, Lord, for you have said in your word that there is a meeting place above the cherubims. Master, this morning, how we pray that we'll meet you at that place, Lord, above the cherubims, oh God. Master, that we will commune with you this morning. Jehovah, that as we talk about the power of walking with you, we shall not just talk about it, but we shall experience it this morning in the name of Jesus, oh Oh God, our master and king, we come. We come just as we are, without any plea, king of glory, that you will have mercy upon us. Friends, bring your lives before the Lord this morning. If you mean business with him, if you mean business with the Lord this morning, bring your life, offer your life, rededicate your life to the Lord. We cannot afford to talk about the power of God and remain the same as believers this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we cry to you that as Paul writes to the Philippians and says, we would like to know you and the power that resurrected you. Lord, this morning is the cry of our hearts that will experience this power, Lord, that will experience the power that resurrected you. Lord, that shall resurrect us from the deadness that we've been in, oh God, from the wilderness, from the dryness. Oh God, may you speak life this morning to our lives, O King of glory. Master, we come before you. Lord, we come before you. We come before you, Lamb of God, that you will take away our sins. Lamb of God, that we will know you and experience you at a deeper level. Oh God, our hope is in you. The psalmist cried, cries in Psalm 62 and, and says, I depend on God alone. I put my hope in him, for he alone protects me and saves me. Lord, this morning, we choose to put our hope in you, that you will save us, oh God, that you protect us, oh God. We cry to you, our defender, you who is never defeated. Lord, our salvation and our honor depends on you, our God and our strong defender, our strong shelter. We run to you this morning that you alone will continue to save us, that you alone will save Israel, Child of God, bring Israel before the Lord this morning. Our master and king, we bring this nation to you. That you alone who said that you are the God of Israel. You alone who said that you will defend Israel. Master, even this morning, we pray, oh God, over Israel. We pray that you defend it. Defend it, oh God. Master, we know that anyone who touches the apple of your eye touches you. Oh God, our master. We cry to you this morning that you will defend Israel, that you will defend Israel. Oh God, from any war, from any attack, Lord, let your children be safe in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, we look to you even this morning for the salvation of that land, for the deliverance of that land, for the restoration of that land. Oh God, our master, you who has never failed, you who is behind your word, fulfill it. May you be their shelter. May you be their strong defense. Defender. Oh God, arise and scatter the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. King of glory, we bless your holy name this day. 
We pray that you alone will come and speak to us. Lord, your word, your word brings light. Lord, at the entrance of your word, King of glory, there's light. There's understanding to the simple. How we pray this morning that you alone will bring understanding to us. Oh God, you alone who is behind your word, fulfill it. Oh God, this morning we pray that you fulfill it in our lives. King Jesus, that will experience this power that we are talking about, oh God. Lord, some are crying. They do not know what, which direction to take. But this morning we lift them to you, our King of glory, who say that even in the valley of decisions, we'll always hear the voice saying, this is the way we walk in it. Lord, this morning there's a soul here desperate for you, desperate for a decision-making knowledge. Lord, we are praying that they will hear your voice saying, this is the way walk in it. Lord, they are businessmen and businesswomen. They want, they are desperate in need of your direction. Lord, this morning we pray that you direct them, that they will be able to discern between what is a good deal and what is a wrong deal. Oh God, our master, may you alone open doors for someone that is here and crying unto you. Lord, may doors be open for your children in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, there are others on this platform this morning that that need a job. Lord, we pray that you'll open the flood depths of heaven. You let it rain. We command the east, the west, and not release the jobs of the children of God. Lord, you say that you bless the work of our hands. King of glory, bless our work even in this day. Bless them, O King of glory, and give them what to do in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we look to you. We do not look to anything else, for we know that some trust in their own chariots and horses. But Lord, this morning we choose to trust in you. We choose to trust in you, our God and Master. Lord, you have said that there is a time for every thing and a season for every activity on earth. Lord, for every season that everyone is in, we are praying that you reach them and touch them. Some are weak, they need your strength, oh God, Master. May you strengthen them this morning. Some are desperate, Lord, will you meet them, O King of glory? Some is a time to laugh, that laugh with them on the mountain hill. Oh God, some they are mourning. Father, we pray that you mourn with them. King of glory, some are in tough times. Lord, we pray, oh God, our master, that you walk with them and they will know that you are a God who never fails. King of glory, we thank you. We bless your holy name, our master and king. We pray that you alone will continue to touch us and to cause us to be at your feet. We will continue to touch us and to cause us to be at that place of meeting with you and experiencing your power, oh God. Your power that changes, your power that, that redeems, your power that makes us whole. Lord, we thank you and bless your holy name. Take all the praise this morning, oh God. Take all the honor, O oh, our King and our Master. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Lord, you continue to adhere us. Paul writes to, to Timothy in, in, in 1 Timothy 6 and tells him, pursue what God approves of as a godly life, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Lord, this morning we pray that indeed you cause each one of us to pursue a godly life. Lord, as we go out to do our work, master that will pursue a godly life. King of glory will pursue a, a, a life of love. Lord, will pursue a life of endurance, of self-control, of gentleness, oh God. Lord, we undress ourselves from anything that hinders us not, not to move in your direction. And Lord, we close ourselves with favor. We speak into this morning, that let this morning bring us your word of, of an ending love. Bring us your word of faithfulness. Bring us your word, Lord, of peace, of love, joy in the Holy Ghost, for that is the kingdom of God. Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, we magnify you. There's no one like you, our king. There's no one like you, great I am. Oh, take all the praise this morning. Take all the glory, Lamb of God. How we honor you, Lord. How we honor you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Is anyone there so that I confirm we are together? Amen. Amen. Amen, Charity. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Today we are talking about the power of walking with God and um, the theme was picked from Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28 from verse 1 to 6. <clears throat> and I'm not Sharon, I am Charity Shazu, I everybody. And I bless the Lord for this morning for giving me this opportunity to talk to us and to commune with God. It's, it, there are those opportunities that you don't take for granted because God has called us not to just sleep, but to do his work. And so we bless the Lord. Once safely on the shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. When the Irlanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. For though he escaped from the sea, the goddess justice has just allowed him to live, has not allowed him to live. But Paul <clears throat> shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. <clears throat> Friends, we're talking about a character of Paul this morning and the power of walking with the Lord. Walking with the Lord involves having an encounter with his presence. And this, we've talked about it many times. You know, you can walk with God year in, year out. You've heard of people who have said, I got saved in 19 something. And, and, and their lives have never changed because they've never encountered his presence, the presence of the most high. But like Paul, when you walk with God, there has to be an experience that brings a conviction like Paul had when he wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 12. And he said, for that which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. Friends, that is a conviction that I know whom I have believed. You can only know whom you have believed if you have a conviction. If you have an experience, if you have been working with this God, you will not wake up one morning and say that you know charity when you have not been working with me. You know, you will even not wake up and say charity is my friend. No, you need to have known me. You need to, to have worked with me at least on a closer range for you to say that you know me. Some of us, we've, we've mistaken people to be our friends while they are not, because we have not taken a deliberate effort to walk with them. But here is Paul. He was sure about his experience. He was sure he had had an encounter with the Lord. Then the Lord called him and made a you turn in his life when he was on his way to persecute. And then he comes and he preaches the word of God. So he was sure about what he was telling Timothy. He said, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Even when I suffer these things, I know I have believed him. I know I have believed a God who is unshakable. I am grounded in him who has called me. Praise the Lord. I do not know where you're at this morning. I don't know where you're at in your walk with God. Is it a power-packed walk or it is a miserable one? 
Friends, we have believers who believed, who accepted Christ, but are still miserable. You look at them and you do not admire to be born again. Because they do not know this power that Paul is talking about. Because they have not encountered him. But here is Paul. When we read from Acts 27 and, and, and the downer part, we see that the ship was wrecked. But praise the Lord, lives were saved. And the among the lives that were saved, Paul's life was saved. Paul writes in, chapter, in, in verse 1 of chapter 28 and says, They made us welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. Paul begins by experiencing, number one, a shipwreck. And here he is in the rain. Here he is. It was cold. But the kindness of the people of Mount and the coldness and the wetness of the storm did not stop Paul. Praise the Lord. Some actually believe that Mount meant a, a place of refuge and others believe it's a place of honey because they were those people on the island were, were keep, uh, beekeeping people. But either way, God had brought them safely to this landing place. And lo and behold, when Paul had gathered sticks, there a viper was. Hello. <laughs> there. The great, number one for me, what really, uh, as, 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 as reflecting on this word, what touched me was, was the way. I mean, in the so many people that God had, you know, rescued from the shipwreck and had landed safely on the other side of the landing, it, you know, it is Paul who got up to say, people, we are called here, let us do a fire. A great apostle, he's the one who gathered wood, weren't they, people that, you know, were in the ship with him. He gathered the wood for fire. For me, it, 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 it just showed me that Paul in his walking, he had understood the, 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 the reason why God had called him to be a servant to others, to serve others. You know, some of us even in our work with Christ, we have not understood our call. You know, we are up there. We cannot be warmth to other people. When other people around us, they do not feel warm at all. And yet they are in trouble. There's rain, there's coldness. But when they are with us, they don't feel safe. But Paul is here, even when he was a known apostle. He's gathering wood <laughs> so that others can feel warm. May the Lord give you a servant heart. Tell yourself, God, I need a servant heart as an evidence that I am walking with you. Because when Jesus was here, he became a servant. Child of God, you cannot claim to be walking with this God in power when you're not serving others. Does this power of God enable you to walk humbly as you serve others? That is a challenge that I'm living with you and I'm living with myself. If I claim that I'm walking in power of God, I should be able to walk humbly and to serve others. And a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. Paul was faithful to God and was living as a true servant, but this did not keep him from this trial, friends. His humble service brought out a viper. The viper did not just, you know, like nibble on Paul, but it fastened on his hand. Just imagine that, friends. You might be here this morning and you're like, oh God, whatever you have brought to me is too much. But friends, if you're walking with Christ, like Paul, it's a great example. Even when he's faithful, even when he's living as a true servant, that is not hindering a viper to come. It is not hindering a viper to come. Paul, Paul actually, you know, 
did not let that viper bother him. <laughs> Do you realize as we are reading? He did not scream like many of us would do. I can imagine if a, if, if a viper entered my office right now, oh my God, it would be a different story. But here is, is Paul, he's not even complaining. He's not asking God why. God, we are just from a shipwreck. Now here is the rain, here is the storm, here is the cold. Now again, a viper? this anymore. That was not Paul. He knew whom he had believed. He was persuaded that he was able to carry him. Paul, Paul, Paul was not like us. You know, when a condition comes to you, maybe you've lost someone like a morning like this very many years ago, 1997, it was also a cold morning. My mother passed on. I don't remember what it was that I was saying at that point. Was I saying, why God? It was a viper. But thank God, I had known him by the time my mother passed on. But some of us just losing a job will cause us to ask God, why me? Let's see the reaction of Paul. Did he scream? Paul remained calm because he knew the God that was with him. He shook off the creation into the fire. If you know what God can do, hallelujah, we won't be like those who say, God, where are you? Do you hear such statements? Oh, you are among the people who also said them. You know, God, where are you? Just something small. Eh? And we begin asking God where he is. If he came from his dwelling, will you be able to stand him? Friends, by the way, those statements that we always make when we are troubled are a proof of lack of depth in our encounter and our walking with the Lord. Do we know what God can do? Paul knew because he had seen that lightning struck his eyes. He could not see. And he had seen God open his eyes again. He knew that God was able. You know, there are times when they pray over you. Uh, uh, I mean, we've prayed over people and, and, and you even decree God will restore you. God will do wonders uh, uh, in your life. And, and, and this person will religiously say amen because that is what they have been told to say. But friends, until your spirit resonate with the knowledge of God in Ezekiel 37, that the God we are talking about, the God that we are praying to is a God who breathes life in the dry bones. Your life will remain a valley of dry bones. Without life, without power, yet you're walking with God. Yet you're walking with a God who says that is there anything impossible with me. Paul had understood that. Friends, God is calling us to a higher level. You know, one thing that really... <laughs> You know, even when people were, were saying, you know, this is a murderer, this is, you know, a God, you know, they, they had made their conclusions. And we've had people make conclusions about servants of God. If you're walking in power, then they will say, ah, that one went under the sea, has gone to Nigeria, has, you know. But when you have comprehended a God, when your spirit can resonate with a God, who enables you to walk in power, who enables you to know him, you will not introduce yourself like some will come and introduce themselves. I am so and so from this and this. I, you know, I have a master's, I have this. I, you know, you're trying to make a point for them to believe you. But here was Paul, he did not even say anything. The guy was calm. Hello? He knew his God. He had understood that his God was a God of creation. 
He had understood it. He had had an encounter. We can see them saying, no doubt this man, <laughs> this man, the natives were convinced that, that finally the God of the goddess of justice well, had caught up with him, imagine. Because remember, <coughs> he was a prisoner. The natives, you know, had known Paul as a prisoner. So he, he, they thought he had committed a lot of crimes and, and, and the goddess of justice would not permit him to escape unpunished. Our God does not work like that. Paul had understood the God who works out all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, verse 28. If you understand that even in your seemingly hard situations, God is working out all things, and mark this, they are all things, not even a viper. They are all things not even a storm. They are all things. Whatever it is, child of God, God is working it out for the good of those who love him. The question for you and me would be, do you actually love him? Are you called for his purpose? You know, some of us want to enjoy, you know, some of these things, but we live the other part of the bargain. We want to quickly take blessings, but we don't know that they are sieved through Deuteronomy 28. You know, when God says, I'll bless you if you do this, then it's period, you just need to do it. When he says, I will work out everything for your good. If you love me, then there's no doubt. You have to love him. You have to be walking with him. You have to be knowing him. You have to be having a close walk with him and knowing and comprehending that he is God over your life. The Bible says, and he suffered no harm. God didn't preserve Paul from the storm just to let him perish by a snake, friends. You know? God has not preserved you all this while. He just let you die by a snake, bite. No. God was protected. Children of God, when you're walking with the Lord, there is an immunity. There is an immunity that you have from certain things. You know, God had promised Paul that you will actually go where? To Rome. To bear witness for me when we read in Acts 23, 11. And Paul was not yet in Rome. You know, when God has said, Charit, <laughs> I need you here. Not even whatever sickness will put me down. The Bible is clear. Paul suffered no harm. Friends, if only we can know that the God that we are serving is still the same God who wants to do business with you like he did with Paul. So stopping a snake wasn't a big thing for God because there was a promise to be fulfilled. There was a promise and nothing would stop the promise of God that was on Paul. Friends, nothing will stop the promise that is upon your life. You know, we need to learn to take God's past faithfulness as a promise of a future blessing and protection. Paul had seen what God was able to do and did not doubt him for the future. Why have you reached where you're at now and is seeing the future is so uncertain and you're like, oh my God, where are you? You know, in all the suffering that Job went through, he had known that his God was God. He did not ask God, where are you? He did not. Maybe we have even done things that, 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 that really cause us to be punished. 
you know, that divine justice is working against us. But the satisfied work of Jesus Christ on the cross atones for each child of God. God could not let Paul be harmed because his sin had been paid on the cross. You've been doubting yourself because of your past. You're like, but can God use me? Can this snake just, can I shake it off? Eh? Not even talking, Paul just shook it off. Hey, oh my God, I love you. He shook it off and there it went. Eh? There are some of us when they talk about us the whole day, you are crying. <laughs> and when a viper comes, what will you do? <laughs> you can imagine such a situation and compare it with what you're going through right now. And this, this native said, ah, ah, now this is really a God. Indeed, God will make you a God before Pharaoh. Hallelujah. This is really a God. And, and, and that is a human reaction. When you're walking with God in power, most times uh, people, we got the extreme, you know? <laughs> we got the extreme. And here, <laughs> the natives are like, he's really not deserving punishment, <clears throat> but he's a God. But Paul was neither. He had just understood the God of power. He had understood the God that he was working with. Daniel says in Daniel 11 and verse 32, and as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by fratteries, but the people who know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. Friends, do not waste your season and your time of being saved, of having an opportunity to work with this God of power. Be among the people, the generation that is changing the status quo. That generation that knows their God. That generation that has an encounter with him. That generation that has a conviction of knowing that I know my God and I will do exploits. I will be strong no matter what it is. I will not sit in the seat of scoffers. I will not sit in the seat of flatter. People who flatter, they're like, eh? they keep putting you up and you puff it up and pride consumes you. No. When you know your God, you will do exploits. Praise the Lord. Paul had known the God who said in John 1 and verse 3 that all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. In him there was life and the life was the light of all men. Friends, we need to know this God, that all things, even the viper, all things, even the storm, all things, they knew who, whom to adhere to. They knew whose command to obey because he has made them. He has made them. He's a God who has the breath of life. In your lifeless life, Hallelujah. He is the God. He had understood it. Will you tell yourself this morning, God, may I know you and know the power that resurrected you. That I will not just walk here on earth as a helpless believer. You know, we see believers even a single simple attack, they will run from one church to another, you know, wanting a miracle. And yet the power is with you. The power to save your situation around you. 
The power to save your marriage, the power to save that child is with you. If you have walked with this God of power, if you have experienced him, Paul says that I know whom I have believed. Friends, even if you forget everything else that I have said this morning, do not forget whom you have believed. Do not forget. Confess this day that you know whom you have believed and you are persuaded. It's not even a viper. Not even the storm. Not even the rain. Not even the shipwreck. Not even that condition. Oh, not even that wayward child of yours. You are persuaded that he's able to carry you through. Hallelujah. You are persuaded. Corinthians 1 and verse 16 says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, whether principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Hallelujah. All things, friends, all things in heaven and on earth, that that is visible. By the way, we are attacked by the visible and the invisible. Whether thrones or dominions, whether principalities or powers, all things, when you understand as you walk with this God of power, that all things hold together in him, then you will stand, hold your head up high. Then you will command all things in your life, even your life, to hold together. Because he says that in him, all things hold together. All things consist. You will understand. And as I conclude this morning, Acts 20 and verse 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Christians, are supposed to be living epistles of the mighty power and the grace of God. Just ask yourself this morning, are you that Christian that is walking as a living epistle with the mighty power and the grace of God? I commend you to this God and to the word of his grace that he will build you up. He will give you an inheritance among the sanctified. The psalmist says in Psalm 45 and verse 4, and in your majesty ride prosperously because of truth, humility, and righteousness, and your right hand shall teach you all some things. Friends, your triumphant entry is not only driven by the desire alone, by the, but by the chariots that carry you to a place of power and the power of God. Your triumph this morning, your triumph over that viper, your triumph that the psalmist had understood it, that it can only arrive in the majesty of God. Because he teaches us awesome things. May your triumphant entry this morning. May your triumphant entry be with power. Carry you to that place 
where you desire more of him. You know, Jesus asked his disciples that who do men say I am? And, and, and you know, they kept quiet <laughs> because they were not sure of what they wanted to say. But I love the character of Peter. He came up and said, you are the son of God. And Jesus told him, oh, this has not been revealed to you by flesh and blood. Friends, the revelation of the power of God cannot be a fresh thing. It cannot. It cannot. You cannot use your own understanding and knowledge to walk in the power of God. And every day you're figuring out, okay, so what am I supposed to do in this walk with the Lord? No, it's not a fresh thing. Jesus told Peter that this has not been revealed to you by flesh and blood. This was a deep revelation. And it is this revelation that we need this morning. Will you pray for yourself? That God will reveal himself afresh to you as a Christian. Jeremiah 9 and verse 32, it says, let not the wise glory in their wisdom, neither the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him who glory, glories in him. And he understands that he understands and he knows me that I am the Lord who exercise loving kindness, judgment, righteousness. May we understand. May we glory in nothing else but understanding and knowing a God who exercises loving kindness, who exercises judgment, who exercises righteousness, and he delights in them. Even as we long to have an encounter, even as we long to experience, to have that conviction like Paul had, that conviction that causes you not know, to be shaken amid these trials, amid these temptations, amid these hard times. May we glory in understanding and knowing him that he is a God who delights in righteousness. Are you right with the Lord this morning? Is your life in sync with his leading? Whatever it is that you're struggling with, shake it off. Because the God of power wants to mean business with you. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We bless you for your word. Lord, how we pray this morning that indeed we will not glory in our own wisdom, but we'll glory in knowing you, the God of all power, the God of all strength, the God of all might that will glory in knowing you, the God of breath, that breathed your very breath to the dry bones in Ezekiel 37. Father, will you breathe your fresh breath upon these, your brethren, that they will walk in power, that whatever has overcome them for long, they will overcome it because they are walking with you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus, for this morning. Thank you for your word. May it bear fruit fruit that will last forever in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.